Hello and welcome back to another DVD and Blu-ray update and this is filmed on the new GoPro Hero 10 uh, camera so well I don't I think it's about a year old now but uh, it's the first kind of real footage I'm going to be filming with it. I am going to film a few um, hikes and stuff like that with it as well just to test the uh, overall durability of the camera and just to see how it um, well how it goes for me really um, but I don't think I'll have any issues with it I have heard mixed reviews um, but it's got to be better than filming on an iPad so yeah I'll just take it from here and see how it goes um, so the first movie in this update is Kioma uh, this is by far my favourite spaghetti western movie uh, well now it is anyway um, just a really really good Franco Nero movie uh, about this guy who's sort of outcasted by uh, his brothers and he's kind of got to throw, overthrow his brothers um, in order to save this sort of small town. Uh, but yeah, really great spaghetti western. I was definitely <laughs> very um, uh, pleasantly surprised with this one. Uh, the next one is another Frank and Era movie, Django. Uh, never actually seen this before, but uh, finally got around to checking it out. And yeah, it is a really amazing film. Not as good as Kioma. Uh, that is by far my favourite spaghetti western and Frank and Era movie. A really cool reference in Django Unchained. Uh, sort of uh, Frank and Era passing the torch to uh, the newer Django. A uh, little brief scene in Candyland where uh, Frank Nero asks Django to spell his name. Uh, but yeah, I thought I didn't actually understand that until I watched uh, this movie. Uh, so yeah, uh, well, it's more that I didn't know it was Franco Nero <laughs> because he looks a lot different to how he was in the older movies, and I just never actually recognised or uh, took on board that it was him. Uh, the next one is Deathstalker. This is one of those crappy prison uh, releases, but uh, to be fair, the film itself, well, the transfer of the film isn't that bad to say that it's a prison release, but uh, yeah, it's a shame that you can't find the sequels to Deathstalker uh, very easily on DVD, but I would definitely pick up the rest of them because this is just such a wacky, quirky film. Uh, very very sexist, uh, you know, as a lot of these older sword and sorcery movies are, but I'm trying to get a lot of the sword and sorcery uh, sort of a more obscure movies. Um, but yeah, this Death, Death Stalker is really good. I can't wait to pick up the rest of them. Uh, this one isn't a new pickup, but it is a new film that I had never seen before, Black Sunday, my Mario Bava. Not one of my favourite Mario Bava movies uh, about this uh, princess that gets uh, killed for being accused of, I think, black magic or something. And then she comes back and... Yeah, <laughs> I, I don't know, I can't really remember. I, 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 it's been a while since I've watched this, even though it's part of this update I watched it a few months ago. Uh, but definitely not as good as Black Sabbath, and my favourite Mario Bava movie is still Blood and Black Lace. Uh, but yeah, it was still a pretty interesting watch. Next one is Highlander. Uh, this is, you can get a lot of better releases of this, but uh, this is the release that I watched, and I was very pleasantly surprised. Uh, Queen do a great job with the soundtrack, obviously. It's Queen, but uh, <laughs> yeah, basically about this... Um, uh, Scotsman who, well, Scottish warrior who is basically immortal. Um, he's lived from the 17th century, I believe, to the present day. And basically there's another immortal that's seeking him out to try and kill him. And the only way you can die, apparently, if you are immortal, is to be decapitated, to which then your soul gets, I don't know, transferred to the spirit world. But uh, yeah, just such a great movie. And... Uh, you know, the Queen soundtrack in this. Everything just really comes together really well with this one. Um, Sean Connery's in this one as well. And yeah, just 
a really great performance by Christopher Lambert. Uh, just definitely check this one out if you haven't ever seen it before. It just got lost in that sort of cult classic world. And yeah, I don't think it's massively well known. It It is obviously well known within the cult sort of like um, community that watch, well, not the cute cult community, but the uh, cult film community and stuff like that. But it's not really, you know, that well talked about. Uh, the next one is Shockwaves. And uh, yeah, this is basically just Nazi... Nazi zombies, uh, these tourists get stranded on an island and Nazi zombies come to, uh, well, wreak havoc, shall we say, but uh, Blue Underground release and a really good appearance by Peter Cushion as well. He's not in the film for that long, but uh, yeah, just really good cover art as well. But yeah, definitely recommend that one. Next one is one is the most recent one that I watched and it is absurd. Uh, basically, the Italian ripoff of Halloween. And if you watch this, you will definitely know what I mean. But it's got a, co a few cool scenes in there. It's got a very annoying kid, which definitely, you know, gives the kid from House by the Cemetery a run for his money. I think that kid was called Bob. But yeah, uh, very very fucking annoying kid in this. And. Uh, it does have, it's just, I mean, there, look, the, it's pretty much scene for scene, a ripoff of Halloween. Uh, even has the, the shit with the eyes getting pierced. I mean, Michael's eyes got shot out, but uh, just him bumbling around a corridor for about, well, five minutes. Uh, but yeah, a lot of pretty cool scenes uh, that redeem the boring parts, but... Yeah, it's also uh, loosely a loose sequel to Anthropophagus, uh, but yeah. The next one is one I haven't checked out yet, Black Roses, uh, heavy metal horror. Don't know much about it, but I know it's kind of, well, I know it's within that genre of heavy metal horror, uh, like Trick or Tree and uh, Slaughterhouse Rock, I think it's called. Um, uh, but yeah, uh, pretty cool cover art. Probably the most coolest cover art on a DVD that I own. Uh, sign ups release, so I can't wait to check that one out. Next one, another one I haven't seen yet, Body Bags. I'll definitely be looking to check this one out uh, very soon. Sort of anthology, John Carpenter movie. Uh, Toby Hooper helps with it as well. I don't think he, I think he just directs a small segment in it there. Uh, but yeah, uh, artisan release. I think the only other artisan release I have is um, Chopping Mall. The next one is To the Devil a Daughter. Uh, really cool Hammer film, to be fair. Um, I think the only other uh, Dennis Wheatley uh, Hammer adaptation I haven't seen is The Devil Rides Out which I definitely will look around to getting soon. But yeah, Christopher Lee does a great job in this as well. And yeah, pretty complex story about this, uh, basically a cult that uh, kills this uh, woman and her child is basically the second coming of Satan or the embodiment of Satan. And uh, it's about this like, uh, I think this guy just, against this entire cult that tries to save her. But yeah, a uh, really cool movie. Next one, another film I haven't seen, Count Dracula, Frank uh, Jess Franco's uh, Count Dracula. Uh, yeah, I've heard mixed things about it. Uh, historical, well, not historically accurate, but uh, accurate to the novel with the, the tash going on there. Uh, but yeah. Uh, Legend of Hell House. This copy is unfortunately scratched, so halfway through it kind of jitters a little bit. But uh, this one was, yeah, it was okay. It was a little bit boring uh, throughout. Roddy McDowell is the best part of this movie. Gives a really dramatic performance towards the end, and yeah, uh, if you like sort of possess house possession <laughs> movies, I'd definitely give that one a watch. And The Gate, which is about these kids, uh, well, this kid has basically discovers that he has the gate to hell uh, open up in his 
uh, garden and all these little sort of creatures come out and terrorize him and basically once you kill one creature it sort of like morphs into multiple creatures and at the end there's just this huge sort of creature terrorizing and pretty much destroys the house um that was a pretty crazy description of the film but yeah again the pitch quality on this one isn't great but it usually isn't for these old region 2 releases but that's that and finally i just have a few to show that i picked up from 88 films so uh not seen any of these but first one is a muck which also has another title i believe uh but yeah that one uh, dogs which i've heard mixed things about a lot of people say it's shitty a lot of people say that it's actually very surprisingly good and finally i drink your blood which i've been wanting to get for quite a while i've heard it's quite a fucked up film for what it is uh but yeah oh and there is also another film that i haven't actually watched all the way through um but it is the manson family uh yeah i basically watched this halfway through and i wasn't really a fan with how it's shot but it's supposed to be sort of like a one of those disturbing movies which uh, it, i couldn't really see how it's really that disturbing it's just a bunch of random clips um and it's basically a reenactment of you know, the Manson Manson family murders and how, you know, that whole thing happened. 